Hello and welcome back to Get Set Grow in the community allotments at RHS Garden Wisley. I'm Bupinda and today I will guide you through our crops so far, pests and diseases and cut and come again lettuce. The equipment that we require today for pests and diseases insect mesh, horticultural fleece, netting, garden lime, cabbage collar and for cut and come again lettuce we will need secateurs or scissors and a container for the leaves. Spring has been particularly slow this year with a cool dry April and a wet windy May. So this has slowed down crop growth, so we are a few weeks behind in our development. However, our crops are growing and we are ready to do our first harvests, which include reddish and baby leaf veg. Starting with our brassica bed, you can see that our broccoli, cabbage and kale are doing well and will be ready to give us a harvest later this summer. In our lagoon bed, the runner beans have started to climb their supports. The peas are growing strong and before long they will be giving us a crop. Some of the dwarf beans have germinated, but because spring has been so cold, particularly May, we shall be re some more. In our allium and root bed, the carrots and the beetroot are growing really well. The parsnips are also growing really well. We shall thin this out five centimetres between each plant. The garlic and the onions are looking really good. All we need to do is just regularly weed it. The leeks have germinated and are growing well and we shall show you how to transplant these later in the summer when they are pencil size. In our bed for everything else, the leafy salad crops are growing really well. The potato foliage is developing with vigour. The strawberries are doing really well and also flowering. The courgette, sweet corn and squash have struggled through May, but now that the weather is warming up, they'll catch up. We love wildlife in our gardens, but some pests and diseases can do some major damage in our vegetable garden. I'm going to show you how to prevent the most problematic pests and diseases. The best starting point is to grow varieties which are resistant to pests and diseases. So do your research before you purchase your vegetable seeds. The RHS Award of Garden Merit is a good starting point as these have been tried and tested as top performers in the garden. We're going to go around each plot and discuss the common pests and diseases for each crop. Brassicas are one of the most affected crops. Pigeons devour the leaves. Cabbage white butterfly caterpillars destroy the whole plant. Cabbage root fly damages the roots and club root disease infects the roots. All of these problems can be prevented. Use netting to prevent the entry of pigeons and butterflies and use cabbage collars to prevent cabbage root fly eggs from hatching. Alternatively, you can use insect mesh like we have here to prevent any of the pests from reaching the plants. Club root disease damages the roots of the brassicas. This only happens if the soil is acidic. If your soil is acidic, you can use garden lime to raise the pH of the soil. Legumes are affected by few pests and we don't need to cover them all season. Mice like to eat the seeds right after they've been planted, so starting off in pots can avoid this. Pigeons may eat the young pea shoots. You may need to wrap the base with fleece to prevent them from doing so. Aphids feed on the growing tips of plants. This causes distortion and reduces vigour. They are eaten by natural predators like ladybirds and you can also squish them between your fingers. Later in the summer, powdery mildew disease will affect peas and beans as well as courgettes, pumpkins and squashes. It's a fungal disease which causes a white coating over the leaves. 
It's important to keep the plants well watered, as drought stress plants are more susceptible to this disease. Remove pea plants as they grow old and successionally sow peas so that you have young productive plants through the summer. Carrots can be damaged by carrot root fly larvae burrowing into their roots, so you must cover it with insect mesh like we have. Alliums don't get many pests, but they can suffer from rust disease, which reduces their vigour. It's important to space the plants to ensure good airflow. Always plant onions, garlic, shallots from sets bought from garden centres or online. Never plant supermarket ones as they may carry diseases. Leafy crops aren't too affected by pests other than rabbits, slugs and snails. Make sure you fence your vegetable patch to prevent the rabbits from entering. Slug populations can be managed by applying organic controls like nematodes. This is watered into the soil and the nematodes kill the slugs. Individual plants can be protected by using deterrent mulches, but this is not practical in large areas. Encourage wildlife into your garden, as many birds eat slugs and snails. And if you can, incorporate a pond, as toads and frogs eat many slugs and snails. Potatoes are susceptible to blight disease, although there are slightly resistant varieties available now. Potato blight is more likely in the summer when we have hot, humid weather. So growing first and second earlies means that you are more likely to harvest them before blight hits. If you see potato blight on the leaves, which start as brown patches which spread quickly, cut the plant to ground level. Destroy the foliage, do not compost it. You can then harvest the potatoes that have formed, but it's best to wait a week to allow the skin of the potatoes to harden and to improve their keeping quality. Most lettuce varieties can be treated as cut and come again salad leaves. Some varieties can be left to form a full head, like iceberg and little gem lettuce. Cut and come again lettuce can be harvested several times through the spring and summer. To harvest, just cut a few centimetres or so above soil level and place the leaves into a container and wash before eating. The plant left in the ground has an intact growing point which will sprout new leaves which can be harvested later. After a few rounds of harvesting, the plant will tire, so remove it. Lettuce should be sown successionally to ensure a steady harvest. Today we have looked at our crop development so far, learned how to prevent pests and diseases, and harvested cut and come again lettuce. Next time, Letty will be harvesting some early potatoes, checking on our crops development, and reminding you how to weed. Thank you for watching and good luck with your plants. Thank you.